Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's live stream. I hope you all are doing well. Hello, Slink. Hello, Havman. Welcome, welcome, welcome to anybody lurking. Oh, I should, uh, one moment, guys. Let me get my, I have my other live stream ads going up on, in, or on, what's it called? Twitter? X? Whatever? Um, uh, <laughs> sorry. It makes me laugh. Uh, as well as Facebook, but I don't have an Instagram ad going up yet. So let me just get that real quick while we get settled, let people get into the stream. How is everybody doing on this fine Friday? It's Friday. Hello, Friday. Um, are you guys excited for a good weekend? Hello, Inquisitor Dragon. Welcome to the stream. What am I doing? I was getting an ad up. That's what I'm- stop distracting me, gentlemen. Please. All right. <clears throat> Where is... I, I take too many photos every day. I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. It, it makes it makes getting these ads sometimes hard because I can't find the things that I need. I'm just going to go re-download it. We're just going to do that. Make make my life easier. Uh, this is the one I want, please. Thank you. Save! Ooh, you got some washes and mechs coming tomorrow? Are they Battletech mechs? And which ones, if so, because that is extremely exciting. Now today, once I get this, this little ad up and going, um, we are going to be working on Gambit, because I have finished Miss Rogue. And now we're moving on. Now live. I'm live now. Whoop. There we go, and then here's a link for people to be able to click and come to the, to the thing. Join me is what I'll call it. And then I'll tap a few times to change the color because I don't like the original because the blue doesn't look very good in my opinion. And then we hit set share and then we hit done. <gasps> Ooh. Sorry, I, I logged in or I, I closed Instagram and immediately it's just, it's just um, Lionel Johnson looking sick from the Joy Toy collection, which is topical because if you guys saw yesterday and we'll have a part two coming out later today at some point um oh my gosh joy toy absolutely spoiled the crap out of me um they sent me a ridiculous number of toys and i can't wait to unbox some of them i have actually a bunch of plans for some of these because there's so many that i can't do it all in one sitting um so breaking it up into a couple different segments and some of it's gonna stay here on youtube and some of it's gonna end up over on OnlyFans, which will be fun. Hello, Rassic Mass. Welcome, welcome. Oh no, I'm so sorry to hear that your favorite co-worker is leaving. That really sucks, but you know what? They're probably moving on to bigger and better opportunities, hopefully, and you should think positively for them for that reason, and hopefully you will find, have a new co-worker that comes in that you end up really liking and being able to hang out with. So hopefully it won't all be too bad. Ooh. Oh, that's really cool sounding slink. Nice. And what color are you going with? Like, I, I assume the Eridani Light Horse Hunter Lance has like, is that, does that have a specific like color scheme? And if so, what is it going to be? Because I know like some people, uh, unlike me, who just went wild and painted my mechs to be completely just all over the place in color scheme. I think when what a lot of people do is they tend to make their lances cohesive, right? I know at least when I was playing, when I've as I've been playing the Battletech um, video game, like the the uh, the one that's on Steam and I think PS came out on PS4, but I think it's on PS5 now too. Um, whenever you change your color scheme, your whole lance's color scheme changes. Uh, which I actually really like and I might use in the future as giving me some interesting guidance on like where I could paint some of the designs because they, depending on what the mech is, the color scheme is different. Like it's still the, the, the proper colors, but they pattern it differently and they don't always use like the same proportions of the two colors that you pick um, equally on all of them. So like I have in currently in my mech squad, I am using a vividly bright green and a purple. And on one of the mechs, 
they ended up reversing it and they actually did more of the lime green color tone and less of the purple and on the other mechs they reversed it it's more purple and less of the green so it ends up like being really cool and i like i like that visual guidance to give me some like better ideas of in world thematically how should these things look it's a lot of dark blue and light blue combos with golds nice okay that's gonna be awesome that's gonna be really sick okay speaking of blues actually perfect segue thank you so much um we're gonna be starting on gambit today i've got him here he's prepped um i do need to do a quick turnaround of him um, where I will have all of us disappear because, of course, this is going to be doing a little bit of capture footage, a little behind-the-scenes content for you for an upcoming video. Um, so let's go ahead and take care of that, and then we'll be starting on his pants, I think, because I was thinking about it, and I thought about doing the pink portion of his, like, top first because that has... Like, it's just a very, very bright color, and it's tucked away. It's kind of, like, behind his uh, cards and everything, but I think it would be better to go with the slightly darker color tone because I'd rather, I just feel like that might be easier to clean up than trying to clean up the pink and that gets blue on it, for example. Does that make sense? Anyways, I, that my logic makes sense to me and that's what we're going with, but let's have us disappear for a moment so I can do this turnaround. There we go. All right. Let's stop shaking my desk. And record. Oh, he is super out of focus. Hold on. One more loop, and then we'll be done. There we go. All right. Yeah, I think it's just going to be way easier to clean the pink off of the blue than anyone else. Uh, yes, I have seen the X-Men 97, and the latest episode, because I think I'm caught up on everything, because I think it's coming out once a week. If I recall, because isn't that how Disney Plus does it? They don't actually release everything at once. They actually do it once a week to, to, you know, space it out and such. Unlike Amazon Plus with Fallout, good lord. Um, but yeah, I have been watching it. I have been loving it. The last episode hurt me. It hurt me so much. Um, here, let me, let me... Sh it hurt me. Like, come on. <laughs> it makes me so sad. Uh, but yeah, but I don't want to talk spoilers or anything because I don't know if people have seen it. So if you have not seen it, or if you have seen it and you know what I'm talking about, cool. But just don't, like, give spoilers in chat, please. Yeah, I slink. I completely agree. I think it's a great inspiration. All right, so let's, now that I've done that, let's go ahead and start with our blues. Now I found a good, I think, contrast color to work with. Azerman blue is a pretty decent blue. I'm going to test the color tone here on my palette real fast, but I think it's a nice, just like rich blue color tone. And I'm trying to, I'm basing him much in the same way that Rogue was a little bit, hold on, a little bit different, like paint differently painted from her cartoon design. The Gambit also is, as you can see, like, they give his outfit a lot more... There's not as much pink on his chest, frankly, and that offends me. So I'm gonna go with more of the full cartoon version, which is a lot brighter and feels like more of a 90s pop, which is what I'm going for. So that's what we're doing, and I also, that means I want a little bit of a brighter blue as well, which is why I'm going with this dark Azerman blue color tone, and we'll do some wet blending and layering with some traditional opaques afterwards, the Fanatics color, so should be good. Um, Nemeth, I was hurt in a they better fix what they did or else sort of way. Um, and I think I know how one of them is already going to be fixed. 
But I don't know how the other's going to be fixed, and I hope it does because I'm sad. What? The, the spoilers of oh. what happened in X-Men 97, oh, oh. recent episode, I hope that I gets- you broke something. No, 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 sorry, no, no, no. No, this is all just spoiler content. Alright, yeah, I think this blue's gonna work perfectly. Honestly, this blue is gonna be good for a lot of things in the future. Um, when it comes to my X- my X-Men. Alright, um, oop, I'm gonna disappear. Oh no, we can't really see. I'll, I'll do it from here then. Man, Gambit, you are not gonna make e capturing footage of painting you easy because of your swoopiness. decently so far. Definitely gonna need to do some cleanup, but that's okay. I'm actually not super worried about his lower legs, because that's actually all silver. Um, you know what? Screw it. I can actually just paint it all blue, now that I think about it. Because, yeah, his legs are metallic. So let's just go ahead and get all of this painted in blue. That'll make my life easier. And give me a foundation of a dark color tone for me to work with later when I get to my metallics. Now the things on his sides I am going to have to do some cleanup on because those are meant to be pink, but we'll deal with that later. Alright, let's go ahead and stop recording. I think that's fine. Let's get you guys and me back. Hello! Alright, let me keep going before this dries and gets me some weird splotchiness. We don't want any weird... I mean, it won't matter too much because we're going to end up going over and layering and blending this, so it should be fine, but... And on the, the lower legs, again, it doesn't really matter. Okay, that's looking good. This bum is looking good. <laughs> it's Gambit, of course it is. No, Mr. Sinister! To be fair, I don't even know if Mr. Sinister was specifically the cause of what currently has happened. I mean, he's definitely the cause of some stuff, but... Because <clears throat> he's a jerk. It's also very weird to me how, like, Woody Rose is really obsessed with Mr. Sinister, and I'm like, you know he's a eugenicist, right? Like, is it just the outfit? Do you just really like his look? I mean, I kind of get that. But it is funny. Alright, pull some of this down here. And paint back over anything we don't want to be blue, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. Sorry, I know I'm off camera. I just need to bring it close so I can see what I was doing. Sometimes, especially Gambit, his angles make him a little awkward to paint. Alright, that looks good. It's a little heavy. It's a little, little heavy in there. Alright. Alright, we're going to let that dry. And I think I might end up doing another layer. Hello, Stacking Limit! Welcome to the stream. No, I have not seen the Amy Winehouse film. I mean, I think Amy Winehouse is in a lot of films, but I've not seen anything recently from her, so... Uh, Interspector, or inter Interceptor, sorry, Interceptor33, you asked, do I have a suggestion for painting on dry porcelain clay? What brand is suitable? Unfortunately, I've not done a lot of ceramic painting. Now, I do know, depending on if you want the ceramic piece to be food safe or not, 
will determine which paints you want to get. Um, because certain paints are not going to be food safe. So if it's like a bowl or something like that, um, and you want to be able to put like, you know, actual food in there to be able to use it as a, as a dish, um, for people to consume stuff out of, you'll want to get the food safe paints. Um, but if it's just a decorative piece that's not meant for like food at all, then I'm pretty sure if it's, if you're not wanting to like glaze it, um, which would involve a kiln and everything, you can just use normal acrylic paint on it. Um, in which case it's kind of dependent on like your personal preference for brand or your budget. Um, be like obviously you can get some very high end quality paints from like art supply stores like Golden, for example, which tends to lean on the higher end of acrylic paints. And then you can also get like cheaper tempura paints, which are the stuff you can get at like craft stores. And that still would work pretty well on ceramic, I'm pretty sure. The only thing that I'd be really concerned by is whether or not the porcelain is shiny or not. Because I don't know... That's the one thing I'm not sure of. Like I said, I'm not, I've am not. i not done a lot of that kind of 3D work before, so I'm not super familiar. I would definitely recommend doing further research before actually buying anything um, and not just going based off my suggestions. But I do feel like you could potentially just use standard acrylics depending on what kind of ceramic porcelain it is. Um, is there a foam tip brush that you can use? There are some brushes that are more sponge brushes rather than being a, like, hair brush. Um, and you can get those at, like, Michael's or, um, even Dollar Tree. Like, they sell cheap ones. And honestly, like, for doing ceramics, especially depending on, like, what style of painting you're wanting to do, you could easily just get a small bundle of really cheap ones and just burn through them. Um, there's no reason to, like, splurge on a sponge brush, in my personal opinion. Um... But sponges are going to be better for doing larger portions. If you're wanting to do finer detail work, I would suggest getting a traditional paintbrush. Um, depending on how small you're wanting the detail to be will determine what size paintbrush you want to get. But honestly, for what you're probably wanting to do, like a four, something like this, or a six, which is the size up one up from this, it's probably going to be sufficient for the, the level of detail you may or may not want to do on your, your product. Well, I meant, like, if there was, like, a documentary or something that came out about her as well. I don't know if I've, like, seen anything like that either. Oh, yeah, this is looking great, but it definitely is going to need a second coat. I've also got a little bit of, um, bling that I don't want, so let me just pull that back a little bit. Pull that up, please. Thank you. And I guess it doesn't super matter because it's on the, the boots and stuff, but it'll be fine. Alright, this is almost dry and we can do a second layer and then we can start actually blending. Oh, poor Cajun boy. Oh, so I really want to know, like... Oh no, they make it a distinct difference between his top and his his pants. Oh, because that's his, like, weird metal belt. Got it, okay. He's got, like, a little... There's, like, a little, um... Lip, you see, on his shirt there? You can, and that, I think, is meant to be, like... He's got this metal belt in the picture. I think that's what it is. Oh yeah, no problem! Sorry I wasn't able to give you, like, a more concrete, hey, go and get X, Y, and Z from here, and that should suffice you, um, because I just unfortunately don't know that medium super well. Um, but I definitely think it'll probably be pretty easy for you to find some further information, and I think you've at least got some decent guidance of, like, do you need food safe, safe paint or not, etc., and you can go from there. Um, there's plenty of art and craft stores, I believe, that would sell the kinds of paints that you would need if there is something specific. So hopefully the people at the stores will also be able to give you some guidance, too. <laughs> Alright, Gambit, how are you looking? Your crotch is still a little wet.
see if we can blend some of that out anyways. Not bad. Alright, there we go. Helps it dry a little faster. Oh, we completely missed that spot there, though. Hold on. There we go, we got it covered now. It's fine. Okay. Just need a little bit more time to dry. I unfortunately don't have my blow dryer in here at the moment. I think it's in the... You bake them? Interesting. Are you putting like a coating on them to help seal them and it needs heat? Or your ceramics you're baking. Okay, that that probably th that's probably what you mean. That's probably what you mean. Yeah, you clean um, the only brushes that you can't really clean normally would be oil paint brushes, um, and not because the brushes themselves require a different cleaning, but because oil paint requires a different solvent to be cleaned, um, and oftentimes. You don't want oil paint going down your drains because it can clog them. So you like, or at least that is a risk depending on like what kind of building you live in and what your plumbing's like. So just be mindful if you're if you ever work with oils um, that you probably shouldn't wash them like in your sink unless you have like a a sink that is not for food or like is easy to unclog. <laughs> But otherwise, no, you can you can clean them with normal. Like most most brushes, you can straight up just clean with normal soap and water. So like dish soap or um, the the stuff you wash your hands with, um, hand hand soap. Um, you can usually just clean your brushes that way. But they do make specific brush soaps, and the benefit of those is they are often also a conditioner, and for real brush hairs. Like, if it's not synthetic, but it's like a real bristle, that can be especially helpful because you can end up leaving it in the brush to help keep its shape, which will prolong its life. You just have to make sure to rinse it before you use it because otherwise you'll have soap in your paints afterwards because you'll have soap left in the brush. Um, but it's a really nice stuff and they make a variety of different ones. I use the Windsor Newton stuff that comes in the, um, it's the Masterclass um, paintbrush store, I think it's what it's called. It comes in this like really ugly brown, like tan colored little tub. Um, and I've had the same tub for like three years and it's been lasting me, so very nice stuff. Um, definitely recommend it. Alright, Gambit, how are you looking? I think we can put another layer on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Get a little bit more paint down on my palette. And we're gonna thin this a little bit more. Because we don't want it to go like too dark. But we definitely want a bit more color. And I'm gonna go ahead and capture this. So, goodbye! Alright, let's get focused on his butt! Yeah, that's looking... That's looking better. There we go. Looking good.
There we go. Let's go ahead and stop recording. Do a little sweep around. All right, cool. That is looking really, really nice. And we'll be able to blend that pretty easily, I think, with some nice highlights. Don't worry about that little white spot that's going to be cleaned up anyways, because it's meant to be pink. So we're not going to worry about it. that interceptor that's fantastic oh heaven I really hope that you're able to that's great he has a ceramic um, cow statue that he wants to touch up because I think it was um, like a precious thing from a family member and so he wants to repaint it and refresh it because it's gotten a little worn out and so um, I gave him some recommendations on getting some paints and everything for being able to paint it up. Uh, thankfully, he can just use standard acrylics because it's a little sculptural thing and he's, you know, no food needed with it. So yeah, it's, um, it's a cute little, cute little cow sculpture. Ooh, you're making a blaster prop? Did you print it with your, um, your, um... Oh my god, what's the the not not your 3D printer, but like not the um resin one, but the other style that I can't remember the name of right now. Cause that sounds sick. That's one of the things I wanna do. I wanna I wanna make props. Alright, we're gonna let that dry a little bit before we start doing some blending. Cause I wanna get some like softer highlights on there. And actually while we're doing that, while we're, I'm gonna bring my palette over. Cause I have two different blues I think will work for my highlight. You can see, <laughs> you can see all the red and yellow that I was doing. So this, this entire red yellow mix that you're seeing right here is entirely me painting the explosion on Rogue. Um, if you guys saw that on my Instagram, I'm not going to show you her yet because she's fully done. And that is, um, something that my YouTube members and Patreons will get to see very soon. But you all, I know some of you are YouTube members and Patreon members, but I don't want to publicly show her yet until closer to the video. But I think she turned out really nice. Um, the explosion looks sick. Um, and you may have seen the preview of that because I did share that on Instagram. So if you want to check that out, you can. There's also one actually on YouTube community. You can see it there too. Um, what was I, what was the point of me bringing that up? Oh, right. That's what all the yellow and orange is from. All right. So I have ultramarine blue and a color called thunderous blue. And this is a desaturated blue grape tone from the Fanatics. And I want to just see like which one looks maybe better. I'm, I'm leaning toward the ultramarine blue, but I might pull some other ones out because this is actually a really vivid cerulean blue color tone, this um, azurman blue, and I want to make sure I get something that's going to match it. And I'm worried that ultramarine is actually going to be too... Actually, it might work. It's It might be too purpley. I mean, on screen, it looks pretty good. Here's the... The other one. Okay, that's definitely too blue gray. So we'll we'll say no to that. But let me grab my fanatics. Oh, that. Okay, Gordon, that would be actually hilarious though. Like terrible, but um, like ha a thing to have to worry about. But also freaking hilarious. Um, so I'm leaning now towards maybe either going with Crystal Blue or Bright Sapphire, because my idea with Bright Sapphire is I can just mix it in with the blue that I've already used, give myself a nice, like, medium, like, tone with that. So let's see, let's see what these two look like. Oh my god, that's so cool! Some sculptures are He-Man and the Battle Cat. 
and Skeletor, and you're working on a Wolverine? Ah! Oh, whoa, 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 my god, I almost threw the paint. That's sick. I am- I have, like, no talent for sculpture. Like, at all. Um... I can paint little sculptures. I've gotten pretty decent at that, but I can't, like, physically sculpt things very well. Uh, so I'm always really, like, that's always really cool to me to see people do that. Yeah, I'm leaning immediately towards this really, really pale blue. But let's see what this crystal blue looks like. If I can... If I can... Oh, there we go. the bottle with it. Actually, maybe I'll do the crystal blue. Maybe I'll do the crystal blue and the really light blue. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with that. Because that... That blends into itself well. Okay, yeah, we're gonna definitely do that. Maybe we'll bring in the light, light blue. But I'm glad we put the little test out. Alright, we... Can go ahead and start painting then. Now, this is. He's not fully dry. That's okay, because we're going to be wet blending anyways. So let's go ahead and get ourselves focused. Maybe bring my light in a bit more. And bring this one down maybe a bit more. Okay. I'll move that in a second because I'm gonna go away for a moment. Alrighty. Mixing up some paint real fast. That looks great. Come back in. Never, um, you know, I was about to say never on my walls have I spilt paint from them flying out of my hand. Um, okay, so let me clarify. Let me also move this. I have spilt paint on both walls and floors, as well as tables and various other objects, but never because it specifically flew out of my hand because of shaking. Um, because when I'm shaking them, normally they are closed. Now, I have definitely picked up a bottle that I thought was fully closed, shook it, and it definitely was not fully closed, but I didn't drop the bottle. I just sort of went, oh, fuck, and then squeezed really hard to try to finish closing it and had stuff dripping all over my hands. Um, but I have completely just, like, these, these, just making sure it's, it's fully closed. These contrast color bottles, especially, are just notoriously bad. 
about being able to knock over. Like, they just, you, you bump them and they, they go flying. So, um, I have definitely shot one of these things while open off of my desk onto my floor. And because the splatter was so much, yes. And we had a little short, like, where the desk was at that time, there was a wall and it did hit it, yes. DRLS word? No. <laughs> I, I will not. Um, also, I actually haven't watched the footage yet. I saw, like, clips of it, but I didn't really focus and see, like, what exactly was going on in it. I just saw that it had, like, been shared, and I thought that was a choice. Slink, I do! Um, you have to join my Patreon in order to get access to my Discord. Because that is basically my way to connect with my Patreon supporters is you sign up for that and then you get access to the Hobby Night Discord where you can then post your works in progress, your finished projects. We can chat about wrestling or ner other nerdy things. Um, you can sell and trade your stuff. Um, all sorts of things on there. Um, and then of course you have a little bit more direct contact with me. Um, and I love seeing what the Hobby Night Legionnaires are working on. It is, there's some good stuff on there. Some very talented, talented folks on my Patreon um, and who are supporters of the channel. And I love seeing what they're working on. There's also like photographers on there and like various other stuff. So if you're not, if it's not strictly miniatures, that is fine. If you have other nerdy, like if you're a cosplayer, I've got a couple of people who like to share their costumes that they're working on for upcoming conventions and stuff. So it's a really good time. I highly encourage you to check it out. Um, but that's how you get access to my Discord. Oh my god. Okay, so the worst that I've actually had happen is it wasn't an army painter bottle, but I'm just using this as an example. So with these kinds of bottles, um, there was, I think it was from Green Stuff World. Because they ship internationally a lot, they seal the tops of their bottles. And you need to, like, clip them sometimes in order to open them up. Um, or at least, maybe, maybe it wasn't Green Stuff World. I don't remember now who it was, actually. There was somebody that I had, some paint brand, and the bottle had a very thin, like, thing you needed to snip off in order to get it to, like, flow properly. Um, at the cap. And so I was, like desperately squeezing on this paint bottle. It was, it had its cap off. I was like, why is there no paint coming out of this? And I pushed so hard and there built up so much pressure that what actually had happened is this little portion here, the cap that normally you can like, you know, pop out because you can see it separates there a little bit. Um, it, the pressure just shot it completely off of the bottle. And all of the paint that I was trying so hard to squeeze out suddenly did. It had a place to go and it went all over my desk. And I was so sad because I was like, great, that was a waste of a relatively expensive bottle of paint of a unique color tone that I am not going to have easy access to. Great. <laughs> it was just a push and a headlock choke. Ah, I got it. Yeah, that seems pretty tame, honestly. Again, I, I kind of consider it a choice to, to showcase that, but you know. I'm not a billionaire who owns a football company and a wrestling company. Alright, let's keep working on these highlights, guys. Hey, Red Panda. Oh! It's Friday. Do you know if you've gotten your package yet? I haven't actually checked my messages on Discord, so I don't know if it's arrived for you yet, if you've let me know there. But I, I hope it gets there soon.
All right, let's do a little bit more blending. Cause I don't quite like how that is so stark of a transition. There we go. That's looking better. Oh, good. Okay, good. I hope it arrives soon. I get really paranoid whenever I like send things out. I'm like, <laughs> is it gonna be there? So good. I hope it. I hope it gets there soon and without any problems. I keep. I don't know why I keep closing this paint pot. I keep needing more of the color. <laughs> that booty. Sorry, didn't realize I was so far off screen. <sighs> That's a great way to honestly handle it. That also allows you to experiment with a lot of different characters, a lot of different, like, just fun you can play around with, too. I dig it. That looks good, I think, on that leg. Just gonna take it off screen for a second. Do a little touch of a little light pleasing that requires some delicacy. Try a little bit of a lighter highlight. So I'm gonna try to record this, so give me one moment. Yes, Link, I have um I actually have a number of them now. Unfortunately, I have since thrown some of the boxes away because I consolidated a lot of the paperwork that I had in them into one like container. But I have, I want to say, okay, so I want to say I have the A Game of Armor Combat set, which is the first one I got. And then I think I had one that was called just Beginner Set, 
or something like that. Like it was, it, or starter set. It only came with two mechs in it. So it's like a very basic, here's two dudes, get started with that. Um, whereas like a game of armor combat, I think came with like four mechs or something. And then I also picked up, I want to say it's the set that came out before they released Alpha Strike is I think what it's called. So it's whatever set came out before that. But whatever, whatever the version of Battletech that plays a little bit more like Warhammer 40k is, I want to say I have the set that released prior to that one. But I have like, I mean, just behind me here, like literally you probably can't, no, you can't see them, but my chair is covering them. I have at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's eleven Battletech mechs sitting literally behind me. So I have a fairly decent collection. I also have some of the metal ones from, um, oh, what's that brand called? Uh, Rao, Rao Ratha? Rao Ratha. So I have a couple of Battletech miniatures from them. Um, they're actually older ones, not more, they're more modern ones. Because I think the company's still around. It, I don't remember if it was Clan Invasion or not. It might be... Rao Partha. It's, it's the Rao Partha ones, not the Ironwind Metal. Because Ironwind Metals is still around, right? Is Rao Partha still around? I can't remember. I know that we've talked about it before on chat, but I can't remember off the top of my head. All right, give me a second, guys. I'm just going to do a little bit more highlighting. I'm going to actually bring my camera in a smidge, too. There, that's better. All right, there we go. Thank you. Yeah, it's looking really good. I'm very happy with how it's turning out. Hello, Neil JB. Good evening. Hope you're having a good time in the UK. On this Friday night. Hopefully you have some fun plans for the weekend. Are you going to end up going to Salute? Isn't that happening in the UK soon? I don't know where. Specifically. I can't remember. Um, where I saw that it was going to be happening. But I saw that Luis Sugden was going to be there. And a couple other people I think too. Like, Rogue Hobbies will be there. Which is pretty cool. All right. 
I don't care about the bottom because it's literally going to be painted silver. Uh, excuse me while I paint his butt a little bit in a sort of awkward position. Also, I need a little bit more crystal blue. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I've been really getting into it, and I love the fact that, like... I've not gotten too deep into the lore for Battletech. Um, I've not read any of the books or anything specifically, but as I've been playing the video game, I really like the the world that it's set up, and I realized that I actually have a bunch of short stories from the, the setting, because a lot of those um, starter sets and everything that I picked up also came with a collection of short stories in them. And so I'm hoping to like actually read through that at some point and uh, familiarize myself a little bit more with like the in-canon lore. Because it definitely seems like it has some interesting stuff going on in there. Doing some blending. Some nice, nice blending. Sorry for being a little quiet. I just got really focused on what I was doing. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I want to do a little bit of an emphasis here. And then I'm going to thin it out a little bit. Oops, sorry. Should be shadowed based on his outfit. Darken that a smidge. Pull it back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Darken that a smidge. And then a little bit right there, and then a little bit right there. All right, let's get a little bit more of our light color tone back in, a little bit more moisture on our brush. That's too much. Because we want this to be thin like a glaze. I think his pants look pretty good. Oh. 
I completely agree. I do think the mech art is very awesome. You're playing Baldur's Gate 3 right now, Neil? That's awesome. Ooh, that sounds great. Listen, a, a chill a chill day of playing some Baldur's Gate 3 followed by a weekend where you get to go into a bar, hang out with your buds, and drink and talk Warhammer. I mean, that sounds like a pretty sick weekend to me. I, I think it's really, really sounded great. That makes sense. Uh, no, I get it. I get it. I just feel bad because I'm like, well, I'm on stream and I should be talking more. But I got really into that blending. Um, I'm very happy. Like, I... So... I understand completely the appeal to anybody that likes to do blue color schemes on their models. Whether it be for Space Marines, because you're into Ultramarines, or Crimson Fists, so you all have a really blue heavy color scheme, or any of the other ones that do as well. Or you, you know, just really like blue as a color, and you're just like, all of my battle tech mechs are going to be painted blue in another color with predominant focus on blue. I get it, because honestly, blues really, like greens, blues and greens, in my opinion, blend so well. Like, they just work so well to blend into each other and just create this gorgeous looking, like, product. Like, I could see myself painting an entire, honestly, ultramarine squad in this color. Because to me, ultramarine blue is too muted. It's almost purpley. And I want them to be vivid blue. Um, so I'm really liking this. But we need to do some cleanup. These are not pre- or these are not 3D printed, no. These are stock miniatures from Marvel Crisis Protocol. Um, you can see them here. So this is the, their box set. So it's set with specifically Gambit and uh, X-Men, which they call X-Men's power couple! <laughs> if only! Um... <sighs> If you've watched X-Men 97, you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, we have some cleanup to do now, now that we've finished with our blue. So we gotta work on some pink, some beautiful magenta. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, getting some of the old uh, books from Humble Bundle, that's a great call. Because you can get some really good stuff with the Warhammer stuff as well. Can I completely get that? Sometimes life just gets in the way, especially when you want to participate in like some of your favorite hobbies. And you gotta you gotta give yourself time. Don't beat yourself up about not being able to get stuff done. You'll be able to when you're ready, when you have time and it'll work out great. And hopefully you'll have a blast doing it. Oh, excellent. They're running a bundle right now. Okay, Slink, thank you. I'm, I think I missed that earlier, so I apologize about that. But I will definitely check that out. That's great. Can take it at your own pace. Sometimes getting into painting, especially if you're relatively new or you've been out of it for a really long time, can feel daunting. But just go at how you feel you can and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Like that's the one thing I can't emphasize enough when it comes to any portion of this hobby, whether no matter what skill level you're at, like you got to just be OK with making errors, having to maybe redo stuff, maybe spending a little bit more time on a miniature than you originally anticipated, because that happens to all of us. I do it all of the bloody time. Um, but ultimately, practice really does help, and the only reason I can paint as well as I feel like I can is because I have been doing this for consistently about four to five years now. Um, I have been doing art my entire life, so I have that benefit of I've just been doing stuff with art forever, um, and I always have a passion for it, so I, I'm, I'm lucky that I don't often go through slumps anymore it's i had when i was younger definitely went through these peaks and valleys of really getting invigorated to paint miniatures and then dropping it for like years sometimes and then jumping back in weirdly and then dropping it for a few months or weeks and then jumping back in and like doing this like weird just like scaling of hobby 
Um, but eventually, I sat down and I just started getting into a groove. And what really helped was finding a paint brand that I really liked working with. Like, I really enjoyed when contrast paints came out because it gave me access to a paint that I felt functioned the way that I expected paints to flow and move, especially on a miniature. And I think that really helped. So my suggestion, maybe if you are in a slump, is to potentially seek out a different paint style, perhaps, maybe a different brand, or just try a different technique. Because you might find that doing that really ignites something in you and you're like, shit, I can, I suddenly have time for this. I suddenly have energy and passion for this again, and I'm ready to go. Exactly, Road Scar. Errors and mistakes should only ever want to make you push forward and try harder rather than discouraging you. And one thing that I can also not emphasize enough, and I want everybody to really take this into heart when it comes to anything that you're working on. It is fine to compare yourself to other people, but you should not base the validity of your own work on that comparison. Because you are not the person that you're comparing yourself to, and your style, your techniques, your approach is going to inherently be different from that person. Even if you, like, let's use myself as an example, because I am a YouTuber, obviously, I imagine there are some people out there who followed my techniques, but maybe not gotten the exact same results. And that's okay, because it takes time to figure out how to get those results, because describing them is not always the easiest thing. That's why I try to show as much as I can of some of the things that I'm doing. And I do think over time, you will figure out how it works best for you. And that will inevitably start to encourage you to want to keep painting. Because one of the things that I have found is once I found some good paints that I liked working with and I really started to build up any level of confidence in what I was doing, because I really didn't have a lot of confidence in my ability to pick colors, for example, when I first started. Um, because I used to work a lot in black and white mediums rather than doing anything with color. So using color kind of freaked me out because I was like, oh, I don't feel like I'm very good at this. And every time I've tried to do color in the past, I feel like it sucks in comparison to like my coworkers and my friends or my colleagues in college, whatever. And I realized that I had to stop comparing myself to those people, focus on what I wanted to physically improve on for myself to make myself like what I was doing better. And then once I got into that and I found this flow and I found the good paints that I like to work with and... I felt like I could move forward, it really opened up a lot more for me and I started wanting to paint more. And so that might be something that helps you. Ken, you're so welcome. It's my pleasure. I, I want, like, my goal with, like, my channel and stuff has always been to just encourage people to want to paint more, to be creative, to embrace their hobbies, because I think it's very important. I think it allows us to connect to others via art, which I think is also, again, just very important. And yeah, I just, I want people to, to create and share their creations. So I am perfectly happy to, to give pep talks and try to get you to paint more, because it's, I'm greedy. I want to see more people creating art and cool things on the internet for me to consume and engage with. And to be inspired by because frankly i look at a lot of stuff like you folks do and i'm like dang that's cool i want to try doing something like that or you know i want to try doing some scale painting like that or, or a technique like that or trying to match character like that etc there's lots of there's lots of cool stuff and a lot of people on the internet have inspired me including some of you in chat Hello, Rab! Welcome to the stream. Dude, consistent workouts are so hard to maintain. I struggle with that myself. I have not been to the gym in a little bit, and I really want to get back to it this coming week. Like, that's my one of my goals.
Just doing a little bit of just like close up cleanup because it's. It takes a little while. It takes a little while to do this cleanup stage. Whoa! Slink, I like to use um, Wraithbone or Gracier, actually. Either of them um, work really well. It really depends on what I'm working on. So for these particular characters, I went with Wraithbone because a lot of their color schemes tend to lean more on the warmer side of the color palette. Like Rogue is yellow and green. Um, and the green that she is, even though green is typically a cool color tone, leans more yellow than it does blue. Um, so I would still say it's a warmer green than anything else. And then Gambit here, if I can get him into focus, um, while he does have, of course, the blue pants, he also has a lot of browns and then he's got the magenta on him, which still leans a little cool tone. Like, it's actually a cooler red color tone. But I thought the lighter wraith bone would work better underneath that, especially for their Caucasian flesh tones. If I was doing something that was leaning more cool toned or a little bit more metallic based, I actually tend to lean towards going with Gracier. Now, the reason I don't do white is not because I don't like I don't like white or anything like that as a primer. Um, I actually have an AK branded primer that I really want to test out because Chaos Cultist used the black version of this primer actually on this Ultron model that he painted up like a um, like a Sentinel, and it looks amazing. And the primer was so slick it was just like and i mean that in a like it was nice like it was just like it wasn't actually like slippery or anything like that that was kind of a weird word to use for it but like it was just it was a beautiful finish for this primer and it looked really nice to work on and i have a white version of that same paint and i want to see if the white comes out the same way because in the past i personally the old citadel white primer that they used to have i think it was like called white scars or something like that was, in my personal opinion, terrible. Um, it just, its consistency was never very good, in my opinion. I just, I felt like I, no matter what temperature I was priming at, I got it, you know, that rough, like, craggliness that you get sometimes if the, like, if you're spraying in too cold of air, um, or too moist of air. Like, I got that a lot with the white primer, and so I stopped using it. The reason the Wraith Bone and Gracier tend to come up, other than I do tend to lean towards wanting to go with either a warm or cool color base for my, my starting position on a miniature, is also because they are specifically designed to work well with contrast, and I actually did have some issues where the white primer, because of that weird texture I'd get from it sometimes, it would absorb the contrast colors weird. Like in a weird consistency and it wasn't always even and I hated it <laughs> so I just started using um the Citadel ones for Wraithbone and Gracier because they I knew they worked well with contrast because they were designed to work with contrast um I also will often prime in Tamiya paints as well like Tamiya primer colors because I do really like their primers. They also have a really nice finish on them. But these AKs that I've discovered, I don't know if it's like all AK brand paints primers do this, but like, good lord, that black was so nice. And because I like to Grisale a lot, um, I've not, no, I don't normally start with a flat black when I do Grisales because I work with contrast colors and going too dark will just completely mute the color tone and it becomes a little problematic that way. Um, but... I do, I have found that it's it's beneficial sometimes, especially if you do a really heavy gray and white on top of it, so that there's very little black left, but you get a hint of it in the, in the, in the shadows and everything. And, uh, yeah, it's just, I just like, to, I just like to use it because I, I work with contrast so much is really what it comes down to. get the other side if we can. Nope. 
help if I didn't have the focus locked. You know, I've never used um, Rustalim. I've heard of the brand, but I actually like is because that, that's a um, is that a car brand primer or is am I misremembering it? Sorry, my lighting, like, I don't know what happened, but I felt like it got darker suddenly. Is this overkill for cleanup for this one little section? Maybe. But I want it to look good, so I don't care. <laughs> it's an oil-based primer. Nice, okay. Yes, Ken, I do actually keep the, um, all my live streams are available on, uh, demand on my channel afterwards, so it should definitely be up. Do not worry, you'll be able to rewatch it. There's also, you can go back and check the, um, if you want to see more X-Men painting, and you want to see a little bit of the progress that I did on Rogue, there is a Rogue tutorial that is, or, um, stream that's up from... Earlier this week, I think it was on Tuesday. I think I, I think I painted her on Tuesday, so or worked on her on some on Tuesday. So there might actually be two streams. There's definitely me the build like there's a build stream of me building them, and then there's me painting Rogue at least once, and now there should be the Scambit one. Um, and there'll definitely be a tutorial that comes out featuring both characters. Um, that's more concise, but like shows everything. Um, that'll be coming out soon in the future. So probably, I think it's probably next week is what the schedule is looking like. God, I'll have to look into it. Nice, okay. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. Okay, let's start with this pink because I am, I am dying to get this color on him. I decided after looking at my contrast collection and what I have available for pinks um, that would match the absolutely vivid magenta of this version of him, that Doomfire magenta was going to be it. Like, I feel like it's pretty close. Obviously, we're going to highlight it, but I think this is our good base color. So let's get this down. That's <laughs> true. Listen, I work a lot on my orcs and I do a lot of cleanup on them when I'm painting them because I go wild on their skin and just like dry brushing and wet blending and all sorts of things to give them really cool color tones on their skin tones. And so they do need, they need a lot of cleanup. They know, they know. My orcs know. My orcs know. They know it as well as Wa. All right. Oh, God, this is such a beautiful color.
All right, here we go. We should... I'm gonna sneeze. Oh my god, I'm really gonna... Oh, please don't sneeze. Sorry. <laughs> that was probably a little loud. I apologize. All right, let's actually do this. Let's gambit. Let's focus on your shirt. Let's get you painted up, buddy. Those rippling abs. Oh, yeah. That is exactly the color I wanted. Alright, we're just going to be really careful to not get this on the blue. Alright, that's my goal. Looking pretty good. Alright, we're just going to come down here. care if I get it on the underside of his jacket right now. I can clean that up. And no one's really going to see it anyways, so it probably won't be that big of a deal. This definitely ain't going to competition, so. Alright. Okay, let's go ahead and paint this side. This is the last thing I want to capture, and then I'll come back on screen, because I realize I didn't finish tidying up the other side of his pants. Whoops. Alright, let's go ahead and start recording again. Get a little bit more moisture on my brush. There we go. There we go. No! I have the Black Death? No! Terrible. Oh my god, what an absolutely gorgeous color! Hell yeah. Okay, let's, fi let's finish this cleanup on this side. I can't believe I did like one layer on it and then just ignored it. Whoops! I thought my cleanup went a little bit too fast. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate it. to hear that. I'm so glad it's a nice escape for you. Okay, can you... Nope, you can't really see that at all. There we go. Can I see it? Yes.
Okay, that's looking better. I think I'll need one more pass, maybe? But much better than it was. Now, I will be using the same pink on the cards, but we're going to do that later because I want to... I don't want to risk getting a bunch of stuff on the pink on the cards as I continue to go in and like work on his chest and end up getting metallics on it or something, which will require me to repaint the entire thing because there will definitely be an obvious difference. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do that last probably, or just before we finish the base. Is that a little bit of? Oh, hold on, let me get a little bit of my blue back. Notice a spot that got cleaned up. All right, uh, where is that little, oh, there it is. Okay, I think we're good. Touch that little piece up. Um, all right, I actually think we can just do highlights. Thankfully, the Doomfire Magenta is a little bit more saturated with color than some of the other tones in the contrast line, and so it actually gets a single coating pretty easily. Um, so what I think I'm going to do with my highlight is Wicked Pink. Yeah, I think that'll be a great highlight color. All right, let's disappear for a moment again. And we'll paint some abs. Oh yeah, these colors blend together super well. I might actually need to uh, use my other pink in here to help emphasize the- oh god, did I get- oh. Thought I for a second- I guess I could have used the camera screen. I thought for a second I got uh, pink on his pants. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna use a little bit of more pink. Hold on. Pixie pink is what we're gonna use next. It is on a boom arm, yes, Rab. It's also a macro lens. Here, actually, uh, I can, I'll, after I'm done with this, let me, I can show you.
a little bit more. All right, hold on. Let's get in our brighter color tone and really make these things pop. Not sure that you guys can fully see that, but we're gonna hope. It's very subtle. I'm gonna see if I can push it. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take the middle tone out. I'm gonna just put my Doomfire Magenta on my palette again, and then I'm gonna mix it with a really pale color. Okay, yeah, I think that will work a little bit better, but I'm gonna need more of that light pink. That looks a little better. It shows up? Okay, good. I start, I because I end up staring at the color so long, it actually starts blending all of my, like, vision, and I stop being able to see fully if it's, like, doing what I want it to sometimes. Oh, I haven't painted that side yet. All right, well, that's fine. We'll do, let's finish his torso. good let's obviously paint that side later road scar thank you so much for hanging out we'll see you next time oh overlord tweak i completely i completely agree um you can definitely paint miniatures like if you if you're ever looking into getting into painting miniatures like for YouTube or whatever, you can 100% get the standard lens that you use, like, I think for um, just standard recording, which is what the um, EOS M50 comes with, but, like, the stock uh, lens. However, uh, you can only get so close before you just, it's, you're, you're never going to get quite as crisp of detail. However, hold on, let me refocus him. The nice thing about the macro lens is you can really get some cool shots and also some really nice focus on some very small areas, which is great. Um, I did that actually when I was working on Rogue's face and I'm hoping the footage came out looking really good. JD Hansen, this is, um, these are actually 
Marvel Crisis Protocol Miniatures from the Atomic Mass Marvel game. Um, it's been out for a couple of years, and I think they recently, like last year or maybe beginning of this year, released a new starter set for it. But this is the Rogue and Gambit set from that game. And I'm very happy with how they're coming out so far. Uh, abs look great. Okay, this is what we're doing. We're, we need... We need a little bit of Doomfire Magenta on our brush. Get our base color down. There we go. Lovely. go that looks good all right cool i'm feeling confident about that we need to let it dry so we can do our highlights on that side but oh he is coming together well the only thing that's left to do on his lower half specifically is he's got a belt which is slightly unpainted you can see around the the waist and then the legs on all this blue portion down here um, here, actually, let me, let me, let me use a brush to point. So all this down here is going to be silver. Because he's got, like, these big, like, tall, knee-high boots on that are metallic. The belt will also be silver. And then, actually, this torso piece is also metallic. Because it's sort of like a chain y thing, I guess. Um, and then, obviously, his jacket will be brown. Um, but he's, he's coming along quite well. I was really worried when I originally primed him that I had lost some detail on his face, but I don't actually think I did. I think his face looks pretty good. I was worried I'd over-primed him a little bit. It'll be fun painting him. The webs actually weren't too bad. I've painted Spider-Man from the game before. Um, I haven't painted the more modern Spider-Man sculpts, but originally... The OG starter set from Marvel Crisis Protocol, which I do have, came with Spidey in it. And I painted him. And while, yes, there was some challenge, because contrast paint is so fluid and it flows like inks rather than standard acrylic paints, even without adding extra water to it or anything like that, it actually worked pretty well and I was able to get the design showing up without having to do a lot of extra work. So it's not as bad as you might think it is. That is a pretty cool idea. I think everybody does. It's like the first step, right? And if you mess it up, you feel like you've completely borked the entire project. So priming is a very important step, I think. Hey, everybody. Episode five. <laughs> no! That was mean! That was mean! Boo! Boo! Boo, I say! Boo to episode 5. It was a good episode. I loved the episode. I cried in the episode. It's a beautiful episode, though. My method for priming is... I have a variety of different methods for priming. I will spray prime using rattle cans. I have done... I've started doing a little bit of spray priming with... Um, uh, an airbrush a little bit because I have a spray, uh, booth now that I can set up a little bit more easily and I've been trying to do that which I I like but I've, I haven't done a huge amount of it um, and then what I also will do is I'll do prep after I've primed to give myself further context to work with sometimes um, and by doing a grizzle or slap chop or however you want to call it people have also referred to it as a xenophal prime they're slightly different but it's a similar concept um, I didn't do that on these guys specifically because um, I really wanted to go and capture the vividness of the 90s cartoon versions of them. And I feel like they are hypersaturated in those. And so I decided to not do the Grizzale because I actually thought that would add almost more realism than I wanted. And I really wanted to want them to be cartoony. Yeah, I borrow your phone. I need to get footage to edit. Oh, yes. Here you go. Thank you. I'll have it back in the pocket. Yeah, no problem. 
Okay, Overlord Tweak, we are not going to talk spoilers for Fallout, but I have also started the Fallout series. I have completed the first two episodes. I'm taking it a little bit slow because I don't want to, like, run out because it's, I'm really fucking loving it. Like, much in the same way that One Piece on Netflix made me go, damn, they know what they're doing. The team that works on this is very passionate about this franchise that I like a lot. Um, and it made me like One Piece even more and get me, got me back actually into watching the anime because I had sort of, I tried when I was younger to watch it, fell out and didn't really like get invested, but I really liked some of the characters and like Oda's work as like a creator rather than necessarily like fully investing in the story. And then I got into the live action, was really, really like excited for it and loved seeing the passion from the actors. And I'm getting the exact same vibes out of everybody that works on the Fallout franchise. Like the people who made that show really seem to know the games. And I think they are pandering in the perfect ways to fans of the games. I'm also very intrigued on where the story is going. So like no spoilers. No spoilers, like don't, I don't want to know anything that's happened past two. That is as far as you can talk with me about it right now, okay? Episode two. Um, but I am loving it. Like, it's so good. Love everybody that's acting in it so far. Like, I think they've all nailed their characters. Um, love the practical effects of the um, Brotherhood of Steel armor. Like, that is sick. And I can't wait to see cosplayers walking around wearing it. And I hope they're just as mobile because it's it's so cool. Uh, but yeah, looks looks absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. All right, is this dry? Probably, yes. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and mix up some paint. There we go. And a little bit more. And a little bit more. subtle highlight. I'll come back in and add a bit, a bit more. Here you go, oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Let's see, what time is it? Oh, am I recording? Oops, I hit record. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Um, that's fine. Then. There we go. There we go. A little bit of highlight on the top edge because it's actually getting hit by more natural light. Doing the underside because that's covered by his cape. I love him. All right. Um, I think the next thing that we want to probably do is actually... I think we need to do metallics. Or should I do the jacket? I think I'm going to do metallics. Because I think I want his flushed... Oh, what, what color is your bandana, bro? So part of it's leather and part of it is not. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pull out a black next, actually, is what we're going to do. 
That's what we're gonna do. Because we got like 15 minutes or so left. And I think we can get at least that done. I don't know who Walton Goggins is. And I'm afraid to look it up because I don't want to like... If it's a character I haven't met yet. Is is this character... Is the, is the character this actor plays in the first two episodes? Dude, also, Overlord Tweak, you should totally paint your Fallout Wasteland models. That's actually a great call. Ooh. I don't have any of those, but now I'm tempted to paint some. <gasps> they make Brotherhood of Steel ones, don't they, too? Because that would be fun. It'd be super easy, too, because it's all just silver. Oh, what a great... We ha I have seen him. Is he the scientist? Oh, he's the ghoul. He's the ghoul. Okay. What else has he been in, actually? Because I'm, I'm not super... I don't know if I'm super familiar with his acting career. Has he been in, like, other sci-fi or, like, nerd things? Or has he done other, like, more standard movies or such? Also, um, give me a sec. I need to find my black thing. Oh, hello, Ida. Meow. Yeah. Meow? Yeah. Meow? Yeah. You saying hello? You mean you saying hello? My goodness. Black oh my god, Slink, that's wonderful. Also, dude, I haven't watched for Goalie in forever, but what an underrated, wonderful animated feature. Love it. He's in a Hateful Eight as well. I don't know if I've seen Hateful Eight. I'm not super, like, I don't follow movies and, like, TV shows well enough, I guess. What is it? I, I do know that, though. Why do I know it? Uh, let's see. Hateful Eight. Oh, yeah. I, were, I did not watch this. That's right, it's the Quentin Tarantino film. Okay. Yeah, no, I didn't I didn't watch that, unfortunately. Was he really good in that? I mean, I, I've, so far I've loved him as the ghoul. Um, I'm very curious to hear what exactly happened to him. Because I think I know who he is. Like, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want confirmation. Although it might just be obvious. But I don't want confirmation yet. Because I haven't, like, he hasn't revealed his backstory, even though I think we saw it in episode one. Um, I don't know, unfortunately. I've not seen Justified either. Listen, I'm telling you, I don't, I don't, I'm very bad about watching things. <laughs> I make too much content. I don't have time. <laughs> All right, uh, black. We're working on black paint. Okay, he was Cecil and, and Invincible. Sick. Okay, that's cool. Alright, hold on. I'm going to disappear for a moment. Because I need to record this.
All right. Oh, whoops. All right, hold on, me. Get a little bit of extra footage because I don't know how that all went. There we go. I'm really excited about that. I've already started, like, hypothesizing on where I think things are going and how I think it's all going to connect. Because, like, the fact that there are, um... Hold on, let me come on, let me come on screen as I continue this conversation. The fact that there are, like, multiple vo vaults that seem to be connected, which I know is a canon thing that happened. So, like, I love that. The other thing... Okay, I just have to talk briefly, and this will be vague enough that I think anybody who hasn't watched the show yet won't get super spoilers or anything. But the thing that I've been most impressed after just the two episodes that I've watched of the Fallout series on Amazon Prime um, is that the attitude of the people living in the world feels very appropriate to what I feel like is OG Fallout vibes. Because, for example, the Raiders in the scene in episode one with how progressively more crass they start showing themselves to be, etc. Love that. That's such a subtle touch to sort of, sort of tweak you off that like, oh, maybe these people aren't who they say they are, etc. And there's lots of really cool stuff like that. And we've seen it already in just those two episodes, let alone that it's fucking awesome that we get to see more of the Enclave. Like, I feel like you don't get to see a huge amount of them in the games very often. And so the fact that we're seeing more of that is really cool. I also have heard that this series, while it's not like a direct prequel or anything like that to Fallout 5, that the team that's working on it is familiar with what the setup and storyline, like the bold beats, I think, of Fallout 5 is going to be. And from my understanding, there will be characters potentially in this show that, like, we will see later on in the game. Like, not necessarily in context to what happened to them in the show. In context to whatever's going to be happening with whatever our character is that we're playing in the game. But, like, it's really cool that they're doing that, and I'm, I'm really excited about that potential. Oh, they made the, the... Like, the world feels so lived in. One of my favorite scenes, and this is definitely not a spoiler... When the main character, um, Lucy, is walking to Philly for the first time, and she runs across that one dude in the house by himself, and he is, like, one of the most honest characters, I feel like, within the show, because he is straight up, like, legit with her. He tells her, like, everything about- everything that he says is canonic- can, can, oh my god, words- canonically truthful to the Fallout world. And it's so perfect. The other thing that I absolutely love is all of Lucy's reactions to everything that goes on around her. Because she is obviously playing the main character of the game that I think the role we would represent. And so there's been some scenes where she's like given a, a she has to do a thing. And I'm sure some of you will know, like in episode two, for example, she's given a thing at the end of the episode where she has to do something. And she's like, Freaks out for a moment, like, has, like, a little bit of an existential, like, I can't believe I have to be, have to do this. In the same way that sometimes you'll play the game and be like, wait, what, this is my quest? This is what I'm being asked to do? Well, okay, then. And then you go and do it, even though it's something that you might otherwise be like, wow, that's something I would definitely not normally do, even in this circumstance. I don't know if I'd go that far. And it's really, really cool like that. Yeah, it was so cool. Like, I, I have loved the first two episodes so far. Um, really, really fantastic stuff. All right, we need to bring in a little bit of black to darken this. Because while it's looking decent, it's not exactly where I want it to be. So I think actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a dark gray with the black contrast that I already have. And get some slight highlights, but a little bit more opacity. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need more black. My favorite thing that he said to her was the like, I'm probably gonna die soon, you won't have to put up me with me for long. And I was like, I mean, the man's honest, he probably will. And fall 
out. All right, let's come back in here. Let's get ourselves to focus on Gambit's beautiful face. Thank you. I'm really glad you think so. I'm very happy with how he's coming out. Oh, yeah, that's better. There we go. That's more the depth I was hoping for. blend, go a little bit darker, and then we'll highlight a little bit. Get some highlights in. Alright, I think that's looking pretty good. We got plenty of blending going on. Let's go ahead and uh, get this little section of his mask that I didn't get. need to do some cleanup on his face, but I think that will be fine. All right, and I think with that, yes, it's almost three o'clock. I'll do a little bit of cleanup with you as we wrap up.
Ooh, who would I want to see brought back into the X-Men? Honestly, probably Fantastic Four, I think, would be the most interesting. Spider-Man would definitely be cool. Um, I know Spider-Man's done plenty with the X-Men in the, in the past. So seeing him be ar arriving would be fine. But honestly, I'm liking the focus that they're doing right now. Um, with the franchise. So I don't even know if they need to bring in some of the outside Marvel superheroes. Like, not to say that they can't, but, like, there's so many X-Men to focus on, and I really love the stories that they've been setting up so far with 97, considering the different storylines within the comics that they seem to be pulling from, so it's it's pretty sick stuff. Like, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, it's almost 3 p.m. already. I think Spider-Man or Fantastic Four would be probably my preferences. Iron Man would be interesting, but I don't really, like... I don't know if I really need to see Tony specifically hanging out with the X-Men. Like, I feel like it'd be more interesting for me personally to see either Spider-Man, um, especially if they end up... Well, I guess they probably wouldn't do that because of the era it's set in. I don't know, it's so weird because, like, X-Men 97 feels very separated from the rest of the Marvel verse with the exception of there's that one up that one scene where you get to see the watcher in the background so like clearly it's tied to um what if but like i don't know if i need it tied in beyond that you know what i mean man he is coming out great i i'm really i'm really pleased with that pink and that pur that uh, pink purple that pink and that blue like I feel like I'm nailing it. Like, so there's there's the... Like, maybe, maybe I made his pants a little too blue. But, like... He's such a badass. I fucking love Gambit so much. Um, alright. I'm gonna go ahead and head off because I have some other filming I need to do today. And take care of. And I want to make sure that I get that done soon. And I think I've made some really good progress on Gambit today, so I'm very pleased. And then I might also watch some more Fallout because I want to and you can't stop me. Ha 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 ha. Um, so yeah, I think that's going to be my plan. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you want to make sure that you never miss when I go live, if you enjoy these live streams, subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications. If you did enjoy this and you want to make sure to see more hobby content like this from me please make sure to also give the video a like that it really encourages me to keep doing these kinds of streams with you so yeah go ahead and give us a like and then if you want to be extra cool and you also want extra content maybe get to see how rogue has turned out and see further behind the scenes on gambit and any of the other projects that i do in the future then you can either join my discord which gives you access to my patreon or you can become a youtube member which will get you behind the scenes on the community page Regardless, I thank you so much for the support. I thank you so much for just hanging out with me, chilling with me while I'm working on things. I really do enjoy the company. So thank you very, very, very much. And until next time, I hope everybody has a very wonderful hobby night. I'll see y'all later. Bye.